Hi. I'm going to call the session of the Board of Revision to order. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are in Treaty 1 territory, and it's the uh, Treaty, the official homeland of the Métis Nation. Uh, with me today is Morris Therrien, who's farthest to my left. Next to me is Tracy Anderson, my name is Sarkia Diamond. The Senior Winnipeg Assistant Department is Rose by Jennifer Martins, and our assistant is Katie Sutherland. We'll be hearing applications for revision of assessment rules in accordance with the Municipal Assessment Act. The matters for which revision have been requested and shrug each application. And we will limit the session to those matters. The statements that the applicants or the session to make in this hearing must be sworn testimony, and both must be sworn in before providing any evidence here. Be advised, comparative assessments of uh, properties are not considered as evidence by our board. Our board is appointed annually by council. We're independent of it and the city administration. We make our decisions on the basis of the evidence that we hear, and that alone, and we issue written orders that we mail to all parties as soon as possible. Please note that our decisions with respect to an application may be appealed to the Medical Municipal Board for medical means to assess the value or classification, or to the Court of Queen's Bench that pertains to an application for exemption from taxation. And should the party wish to appeal, the matter in house to do so will include with our order. With respect to the hearing process, we refer the matters to be addressed to each applicant following their swearing in. We will then have the session testimony followed by any question the applicant may have. The session may then provide their testimony after which um, any questions will be asked of the um, assessor. After the parties have given all the evidence, we will provide an opportunity to, to sum up if they wish to do so. And when the evidence and application is brought forward, the applicant may leave. The person will repeat for matter on the agenda today. And after all matters are heard, we will close our hearing, we will deliberate in private, and we will render our decision as soon as possible thereafter. It will be issued and sent by a registered mail as soon as possible. The information today is uh, being recorded. It's forming a public record. And uh, thank you. Uh, we'll have the swearing in of the parties. State your name. Jennifer Martins. Do you swear that the evidence you're about to present is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So I'll do that. I do. Thank you. Okay. Do you swear that the evidence you're about to present is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So I'll do that. Yes, I do. Okay, Ms. Martins will proceed with the first matter on the docket, which is 1245 Henderson Highway, and you can proceed when you're ready to do so. This is file number 19-3492, rule number 04-000-254-600. The assessed value is 11747000 This is class code 40, so an institutional property with the liability status of X, sorry, S, which is taxable school exempt. This is one building, 14 stories, built in 1982, with 104 suites and 14 outdoor parking spots. Page two has the income value summary. It shows that there are 91 one-bedroom suites and 13 two-bedroom suites with an average monthly rent per unit at $903.49. There is a vacancy rate of 2.6% and an expense rate at 46.52% and a capitalization rate at 5%, which is those are $11,747,000. Page three we have some rental comparables. On page four we have the City of Winnipeg capitalization rates. On page five, we have capitalization rate evidence. And this is a sample of actual sales that took place during the reference period. And the purpose of these individualized individual capitalization rates is to illustrate the accuracy of the model and not meant to be comparable specific to the subject property. Page six, we have um, some municipal act excerpts and page Seven through nine is the income and expense information from the subject property. And on page 10, we have a um, photograph of uh, a map showing that this is on Henderson Highway between Chief Pegwas Trail and McLeod. And we've got two overhead views of the property. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fine, do you have any questions to the assessor? Yes. Uh, your rental comparable is page 
Yes. So the subject has got 91 one bedroom and uh, only 13 two bedrooms, so it's uh, highly skewed towards one bedroom. Yes. And growth play area at the bottom 794 and your comparables are all larger. Do you agree subject is uh, inferior due to size? Uh, yes. Now your first two comparable has uh, uh, a high amount of uh, one bedroom, but the uh, comparable number three has a uh, much higher two bedroom count percentage wise, and so is uh, comparable number four. So would you agree those rents should be uh, adjusted downward due to the two bedroom mix? Yes. So your comparable at the bottom, there are 881 to 918, and the subject is 903, and even though it's smaller, so would you uh, agree that uh, your rent appears to be on the high side? Uh, not necessarily. Um, the amount of subject property is also newer than comparable number one which would reflect um, in that way. And it's, it's sorry, it's newer than number one, three, four, and five. It's the same age as number two. So, and I'm not sure about the, um, how recent any construction or upgrades on any of the properties, including the subject. So it's tough to say. Uh, your cap rate, uh, market uh, report, page four. The uh, Collier says high rise five to six, and you're uh, at five. So you're at a low end of the range. Is that correct? Yes. So would you agree that uh, 1982 is not a class A property? That would probably be in middle to uh, to the end of the range. I don't know if I agree with that. Uh, page five. You got four comparables. So would you agree that the first three comparables were bought with the intention to renovate? Um, in that regard, we were informed that there was slight upgrade to number one. So I, talking about percentage-wise and, and the amount that can, constitutes an upgrade that makes it so it shouldn't be used for cap rate. I disagree with that one. With the other two, we were not informed of the intention to renovate until September of uh, 2019. September 2018, you said? No, no. At uh, the beginning of this appeal cycle. Oh, 2019. 2019, when we were already involved in the appeals. So it's... Um, you found out from my rebuttal, is that correct? Yes, we and found out from your rebuttal. So we were not given information um, in a timely enough manner uh, to know that these were um, being purchased for upgrade. That information was not submitted to the department. That's all questions. Thank you. Mr. Chair, do you have any questions of the assessor? Oh, I was just looking at the mailer on 7, 8, and 9. I guess they're somewhat irrelevant because uh, they certainly don't compare to the gross potential of rent. Uh, what the mailer says was 736000 on the revenue side on page 8. So there must be some kind of subsidies that go into this thing? Um, it's, being that it's an institutional property and school tax exempt, uh, it would be, um, I think this, this one is a care home. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this one's a care home. So there would be, um, we don't go by, like, they don't necessarily attain market rents okay. for a care home. But in evaluating, uh, assessing a value onto a care home, we use market rents in order to fairly um, assess the properties. And this is all model driven on your page too? Uh, yes, that is all model. All model? Mm -hmm. 
That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there any questions? Um, just one uh, comment for the I see in the um, uh, page eight income statements there that uh, the AG funding year to date of uh, March 17 was 95,000 and change. So, so it is getting subsidized at least by that much. Yeah. That's it. Thank you so much. Mm. And this is an institution, so it provides some level of care to the occupants. Yes. Your comparables on uh, page three, are, do they also similar types of properties? No. So they're just normal apartment buildings then? Yes, because care homes, um, for the purpose of assessment, we assess care homes using market rents. I understand. But, but, but you are use, yeah, but those are market rents that are coming from properties that are not exactly the same. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Bond. Okay, so uh, rebuttal on cap rates. Is that for all properties for today, so I guess for each lot? I think we have your cap rate study. That's re rebuttal on the accessory oh, cap rate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's a rebuttal we came out in September uh, when the, the appeal started uh, and HK has not changed. Uh, so the point, uh, page two, point one is that the precedent and just the board that uh, we obtained in 2018, the board stated that the uh, the appellant had raised a, a sufficient concern in uh, regards to purchasers' intention to significantly renovate or alter the structures uh, the board questions the use of the purchase price and income information. Basically, if the, a person is buying for the uh, with the intention to renovate, they're not buying on the existing income stream. They're going to change the fiscal structure. They're going to change the income stream, and therefore, uh, we cannot rely on those cap rates. So the board agreed uh, with us in that decision. That full decision, they agreed 100% with uh, all this cap rate and disregarded the assessor's cap rate. Uh, the point number two is 191 road, uh, purchase with intent to renovate the questionnaire uh, and the appendix that the, the, the sent to the assessor says they intended to renovate. Uh, condition was fair. The 2017 questionnaire has low rents of 663 for one bedroom. Uh, Talbot, number three, is an email from Asteroid, the manager before and after the sale. There was Bob and the intention to renovate. 2016 questionnaires of rent of five and six hundred, and then the recent website says totally renovated and the rents are about three hundred dollars higher. Uh, so in this case, they, they did substantial renovations. Uh, Maxwell uh, emailed from the purchasers showing intent to renovate. They confirmed that renovations were four hundred thirteen thousand with intent to raise rents for three years. And the 2018 questionnaire uh, actually showed the. Kitchen bathroom renovations of four hundred thirteen thousand. Uh, these were renovations uh, directly to the suites, not structural or anything like that. So therefore, that raises the rents. That's something that kind of cares about more so than a roof or structural. Number five, uh, the session has ward. Uh, it's one of our capital comparables of the uh, direct evidence. We have five point one three. The session's got five. But we have the full income approach and we have the supporting documents and the assessor does not. Point number six, the assessor has burden of proof, doesn't show workup or supporting documents for any of the cap rates. So therefore, the cap rates should not be considered. They have not lived up their burden of proof. That's my uh, rebuttal. Okay, do you have any questions on rebuttal of uh, Mrs. Dupont? Um, yes. Our year to date income statement is 54.3.1 of the Municipal Assessment Act? Um, no. It's in my uh, brief on page 6. Where in response to a request for information or documentation under Clause 16.1c, a person provided information that was substantially at variance with information that he or she presented at a hearing, the presiding officer of the board or panel may order that the information presented by the person at the hearing 
is not to be considered by the Board of Hall in making its decision. Um, in your rebuttal, you provide two emails dated September 26, 2019, and this one, September 25th, 2019, which claim that these were to be used, purchased for, with the intent to renovate, but that was not the initial information that the City of Winnipeg was provided. The what? That was not the included in the information that the city was initially uh, provided. By the owners of those properties? Yes. And the clause you read said that where a person provides information at variance with the information at the hearing. So my report does not provide that information. It's not inconsistent with my own information. Well, it's inconsistent with the information that has been provided to the city. No, no, but it says uh, variance with information that he or she presented at the hearing. Yes. Not when they give you data. Well, in any event, okay, what we're looking for here is we want to find a fair cap rate. Yes. And, you know, trickery is we, we want to find a fair cap rate. Yes. Okay. And I think that's what you and Mr. Capone uh, are trying to demonstrate. So. Right. But you know. well, my argument is that anyway, your clause is not valid. Okay. It's not okay. valid. Okay. Well, it does not apply. Well, that's, 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 that's your position. But the fact of the matter is that we're just trying to find a fair cap rate here. Okay. Uh, any more questions? No, thank you. Any panel members have any questions? Of no questions, thank you. No, no questions. Yeah, I don't thank you. Uh, I'd like to present the cap rate study. Okay. You've seen it many times, so I don't want to spend too, too much time on it. Uh, page three is the cap rate comparable. So we have nine cap rate comparables. Uh, we show remarks on each one of them. Uh, three of those have been renovated prior to the sale. The last three are newer properties. Uh, so those are pure cap rate because people are not buying with the intention to renovate or change the income stream. Uh, they have been renovated or they are new, therefore they are not changing the income stream. Uh, so based on these sales, we come up with the uh, cap rates that we have at the bottom. So therefore we we have really good support for our, uh, our position on cap rates. Page five, four, the next page. As the uh, Colliers and the CBRU reports that the assessor uh, uh, quotes, and we showed that what there was the previous uh, assessment, the first quarter of 2016. So the first one for high rise, the Colliers, uh, they were. 4.75 to 5.75, then now 5 to 6. So the, uh, the low end increased by a quarter percent and the high end increased by a quarter percent. And the low rise, the high end increased by 25%. CBRE shows that the, they have the same cap rate as they had for the last cycle. So there's no compression, but no increase. Uh, but they do show a low rise A, low rise B. So the low rise A, they have five and a half to six, and the assessor starts a lot of their cap rates at five or 5.3. Uh, so they even uh, lower than the assessor, uh, than the CBRE at low rise A. I would believe that the low rise A would be for newer properties in 1998 plus. <coughs> low rise B, CBRE is at five and three quarters to six. Uh, so which would be most uh, low rises that would come in front of this board. Uh, most low rises were built prior to 1980. Uh, very few were built afterwards. Uh, there would be some, and then that, but the, for those uh, built prior to 1980, uh, the five and three to six would be the applicable cap rate. Uh, then we uh, turn paragraph uh, after the table. We quote uh, Colliers uh, stated that the the rising interest rates uh, would affect the cap rate for multiple family. Uh, interest rates shown the uh, Bank of Canada rate increased by 0.75% from April 2016 to April 2018. So the increase in interest rates there, and the mortgage rates right at the bottom increased by 0.6%. And that affects directly the buying of apartments, actually, because they're all finance mortgages. So the cap rates uh, should have risen uh, by about a quarter percent minimum, uh, and they mainly do increase mortgage rates. Uh, we have supporting data and uh, income approach on each of those properties that we have. Uh, 
uh, and that's my report topic. Do you have any questions on happy okay. study? No, thank you. Any board members have any questions to Mr. Dupont on the happy study? Yes, I do. Go ahead, Mr. Green. Uh, I know I've raised that before, but I'll raise it again at this hearing. The On page 90, you're referring to the uh, CBRE uh, rates and on high rise B, you're at 5 uh, to 575. Uh, on that sheet, I'm looking at 18. Then I also looked at page 86, which is the cap rates of the uh, colliers, which was between 5 and 6. And we all, all know that this cap rate stuff is always quite contentious. Now, this is a 1982 building, masonry built. Uh, what condition is it in? Because you're using, from what I read, the highest rate that has come out of these studies. Uh, how can you justify your 575? Uh, on a building like this, uh, based on the information you provided. The information you got, page 86 and page 90, are shown on my page 4, top of the page. So I, I do quote the, the Colliers, nope. and CDRE. Okay. Page 4, the top okay. there. That's all yeah. summarized there, okay. Right, and then I showed the change in the high and low, and I went through that before. So that So they, they, they have high rise B at five to five and three quarters. Uh, and college has five to six. So the high ends, five to three quarters to six. Uh, the assessor has no difference in cap rate between the high rise and low rise. So we do the same thing. Uh, so based on our cap rate comparables, we have uh, five sales and there's 66 to 74, 6.15. Uh, we're saying the next age group would be 1980 to 97, and we're going uh, quarter percent less. Uh, and that's how we get to five and three quarters. And 1982 is not a new building. Well, maybe my question is not appropriate because we haven't seen your arguments on the on the buildings, I was on the same building. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so no, no, in relation to cap rates, it, it is uh, what? So that's uh, 18 and 17 is 35 years old. So it's, it's not to me a, a, a class A high rise. But uh, the CBRE has a high rise B, though. So I don't know. Okay, that's all, Mr. Chairman. For now. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any questions. You answer, thank you. So you proceed with your uh, argument. I have one more report for all properties returning in this study. One of that study. So on top we show the uh, rent from CMHC, and CMHC rents uh, by age group. Uh, however, they mix high rise and low rise, they mix renovated, non renovated. Uh, so they tend to have uh, rents which are potentially higher than what they should be, depending on what, what they are. Uh, whereas we categorize uh, in 15 categories. Uh, and you'll see that 1998 plus, so it's the, the newer apartments, uh, there's five of them. The repair minutes are relatively low at 918 per suite. And the rents are relatively high at 1229. 1998 plus renovated. Same thing, low repair and maintenance, uh, relatively high rent. The uh, the one that has a lot of uh, properties is uh, number five, 
the high rises, 46 to 1989, there's 20 of them. Actual requirements, 2001 one We stabilized at 1731. The uh, average rent is 999. That's the uh, second last column. Uh, and then the other uh, group that has a lot of property is the uh, number 10, low rise, 60 to 79, that's 47 properties. The uh, repair minutes actual is 1553, and we stabilize at 1409, and the rent there is uh, 809. Uh, so that's the, uh, would be, let's say, the average rent for that uh, group. And there would be some on the, with the high, on the high end, of, of the rents in good condition, some on the low end, so that's the average. Um, so then we have each of those groups, uh, and then the the one with the lowest, uh, the most properties is uh, page eleven. Low rise, sixty to seventy nine, uh, and they're uh, sorted by the uh, the third last column by potential rents after discount. Uh, so we have the the low rents. To start, and then we have the high rent. So the uh, the uh, highest rent is at the bottom, is at 1072 per suite. The repair minutes on that one is 1293. The one before that, 1017, is 1837. Uh, so the properties with the lower rents will tend to have lower repair and maintenance, and the property with the uh, higher rents will tend to have higher repair and maintenance. Uh, it only makes sense that if you spend more money on your property, you make it more attractive for uh, the potential tenants. So the level of rents is quite often, uh, well, it should be matched to the rents and what type of property it is, whether it's new, renovated, or unrenovated. Uh, everybody, uh, every property is on a different path. Um, so we go site specific on all. So our all are stabilized based on site specific. We end up giving averages, but we're not saying we should be stabilizing on averages. Uh, it just shows what the trend are as to whether property is high or low uh, and, and the rents uh, in relation to uh, the rest are. So the, oh, I'm finished with our report. Questions on the report? No, thank you. Mr. Chairman, do you have any questions? Yeah, I didn't raise it at the ceiling, but maybe I should in a summarized way. I think you had mentioned previously that when rents uh, are below a thousand, that usually has usually has a lower renovated. When it is higher, it's a higher renovated number. Was that is that correct? The way you I said that. I know it's in a, in a summarized way here. I said that in uh, September yeah. when it had very little comparable. Okay. And Have you was, changed your position now on that? Oh, I, what I said is that CMHC mixes renovated, not renovated, mixes a high okay. rise and low rise, and their statistics are not as reliable as mine. So now that I have 115 properties, okay. and I categorize 15 uh, categories, so my statistics are a lot more. So for, depending on what age group you're fitting in, so this is a high rise, 1982, so it would be a, uh, uh, unrenovated, so it would be number six, and the average rent of 970. And the average repair maintenance is 1661. Mm-hmm. Which is under your... your so th- this, uh, for a high rise, it's under 1,000, but for low rises, uh, it's 809. It's a lot less than what Simichi is saying for the age group, because they have all sorts of properties in that age group. Yeah, well, I was interested to see. I know you were accumulating that information, so I was wondering if that had changed or not. Yeah, over over time, I, I'm placing a lot, lot, lot less reliance on Sumichi rent, uh, which seems to be much higher than what we have. So I think if we're going to do some rent com- comparisons. Uh, ours of 115 properties uh, categorized would be better than using Sumichi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there any questions? So, Mr. Department, I'm looking at page 11, I see that you have a number of properties on that for low rise. And those are properties that you have, I guess, the information on, because you represent those owners in in areas such as ours. Is that correct? And what? This information you got from owners who you represent, obviously. And they were all presented to the board. Absolutely. I'm not saying they aren't. Now, I'm asking you, though, 
Um, this is not an exhaustive list of every property that you're handling, is it? Uh, it's about 95% that I have handled personally at this board. Handled and not... Okay, and are there other properties that uh, will go on this list as you handle them? Yes. Uh, every, well. every hearing I add the... Okay. try to add the eight properties that we have on that hearing. Okay, you say 95%. What's happening to the other 5%? Why are they not on it? Uh, some of them have, do not have detailed repair maintenance. They have just a questionnaire. Okay. And if they're over 2,000, 3,000 per suite, we're not relying upon them to be... Okay, are, them, are they lower than what you'd like to see? Uh, no, I, I, I show all the, is lower because uh, I show all the low ones because they yeah. tend to have low uh, rents. So there's none that are excluded because you think that the rates are lower than usual. Just some that you think are too high. Uh, when they're too high, I exclude them. Or exactly. When they don't but there's that. none that you exclude because they're too low. No. Okay. No, I, I actually I like to show the low ones. Okay. Because it shows we do stabilize the low ones well, when when they are actually low. Okay, well, actually, this question, I want to see how fair your report is. And, you know, answering the question that you did, I think. Yeah, so I, okay. I, I believe that probably close to 95%. Very few that we do, with, uh, we do not show. Okay, those you don't show the ones because you don't show because you're too high. They're usually too high or there's not enough detail. Okay, thank you. Okay, we now, I guess, begin your exhaustive uh, defense of uh, your position on this topic. <laughs> We covered all of them, <laughs> so we're okay. It takes a long time to get there, right? Uh, well, you know what? Actually, I hope we only have to do it once because I think we've got a lot of memories on our board, and I yeah. think the session is too, as you do. So, uh, yeah, so we go for the the photo. It's a high rise and has balconies. Uh, uh, that page two is the aerial aerial map. Uh, and, and the map as to where it is, uh, near uh, Chief Pegas uh, Trail, it's uh, south of there. Uh, page 6 is our copy, this is the excerpt from the copy study, and uh, subject built 1982, so we're giving it 5 and 3 quarters. Uh, page 7 is a, uh, our spreadsheet. Uh, now we agree with the assessor's rent. Now we're, we're Kind of having doubts now, based on um, seeing now the assessors comparables, uh, and we didn't have the gross player area. Uh, now we find out that it's only 794, something like that, per suite. So it has small suite size, uh, a lot of one bedrooms. So I would, uh, if I would go further, I would revisit the rents. I think probably should be lower rents. Uh, expenses. Uh, we stabilize based on the uh, financials and we show the uh, three years. Uh, but we also show an extra two years for the repair maintenance and the replacement reserves. So we stabilize uh, uh, some expenses at the 2017, of which the year ending March 2018, for uh, our normal default is for insurance, utilities, um, and the caretaker is UG uh, at the 2017 level. We go to three year average for some of the items that could be um, erratic, which is uh, number 16 and 17, the uh, professional fees and sundry. Uh, we also do the uh, three year average for waste and snow. Repair minutes, we, we tend to default to the five year average. In this case, uh, for taxes, we went with that CC20. Uh, that's basically what we've been doing for years and what the uh, assessor has agreed to do at the municipal board uh, for the uh, 2018 case management that we have. So the um, assessor is in agreement with that, and so is the board. The board uh, gave a ruling in that regard. Um, so the main thing to look at here would be the um, the repairing maintenance from the financials, but when we add the reserves and the repairing maintenance from 1535, uh, which is uh, in line with our repairing maintenance study, which uh, I think is even a bit on the low side, uh, the 1731 for the uh, high rise, uh, uh, our number five. So they're less than that, and the rents are pretty much in line with the. Uh, a repairment study. So the uh, go to the financials uh, quickly. Uh, page 16. 
you see it shows the, the rent uh, and the income. Uh, then it says uh, parking. Simichi funding has some <coughs> Simichi funding. <coughs> uh, shows the expenses there. Uh, the salaries is the amount uh, we put that under management. The caretaker, we've uh, put that number 28, the repair maintenance. Salaries, benefits that they have. Uh, no expenses for nurses or, or uh, other types. So this is a strictly a uh, senior residence. Page 17, that's uh, more of the uh, summary of our maintenance expense. And we separated the waste and snow because we should have separately on our uh, spreadsheet. Uh, page 18, that's the reserve fund. Uh, so the the, the allocate funds every year, and we're not interested in what they allocate, we're only interested in what they spend from uh, inside the, the replacement reserves. Uh, so that we disallow the access control project, we disallow the elevator, uh, we disallow reserve study, we disallow the hot water tank, um, and we disallow interest. So for 20, March 2018, we, we allowed uh, painting um, and flooring, and it shows the uh, flooring is 356 per suite and 158 for painting and 93 per suite for uh, appliances. Uh, our repair maintenance study, I forgot to mention, uh, attached to the appendix is the uh, data that we received from K4, uh, what the cost to replace our flooring and their appliances. Uh, and then it came to about 4000 per suite for flooring, on average for one and two bedroom. Over 10 year life, that's 400 per suite. So when we stabilize uh, flooring over five years, uh, we uh, reduce it to uh, 400 as, as a max if it has exceeded it. And we also studied uh, some properties in regards to painting and our max on that is 175. The appliances that per P4 was uh, 1670 uh, so therefore we uh, divide by 10 years, so we have a maximum 167 per suite over the five years. Uh, so if you, number one, uh, heating, venting, and plumbing, 6122, and uh, 2017 was 4225. Um, and for, uh, it says C315 for yearly comps. Uh, page 19 is a 2016 uh, statement. Uh, naturally, we disallow interest and amortization and uh, provision for a replacement fund. Uh, page 20, that's the repair and maintenance schedule. Uh, we show the HVAC or heating, ventilation, and plumbing. And we show the, uh, all, the, all the years, the other four years. There were around the 20 to 28,000. So for that year in 2016, we allowed only 50% of that 42,000 to bring it down to 21, bring in line to other years. Phase 21 is a reserve fund for 2016, 2015. We disallowed interest, uh, heating, uh, level patio. And tub liners, we allowed uh, other items. Page 22 is a 2015, uh, and the reserve uh, fund for 2015 on page 24. Uh, the carpets and flooring was 180 per suite, and the appliances was only 18. And then uh, after page 24, we have some. Uh, some data I think I uh, got from another property that somebody was photocopying and repairs the ferry. Uh, so that got me extended with, uh, with my uh, submission. So please disregard everything after page 24. Okay, we can't do that. We didn't, didn't have no, anything after page 24. We don't have anything. Oh, you don't? Yeah. Oh, I do. Just yours. That's fine. You're you know, you probably have somebody else's report and they don't have it now. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, we don't uh, have any after 24. So okay, uh, okay. So that's, my so that's your report. Any questions, Ms. Martins? No, thank you.
Ms. Zed, did you have any questions of the uh, Curiosity question, what is an EPH resident or tenant? It's in the Elderly person's housing. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. That's it. Okay, Mr. Well, I'm always interested in the repair and maintenance and replace and reserve, but I guess you've done your best to try to explain both here, which comes out to 1535. Right. Okay. Uh, well, I'm looking at, I'm sorry for so page one? seven. Yeah. I'm on page seven, okay. okay. So that would, just bring it back into your, your comment on repair and maintenance previously. I, I think you've answered it, but... Uh, the rent is at 904, so a 1535 repair and maintenance would be uh, reasonable in relation to what you explained to us on repair yeah. and maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit on the low side. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. I thank you. questions either, so thank you very much. You'll hear from us on this one and go on with the next property, which is item number two on our agenda, which is uh, 1080 Henderson Highway. Are you ready, Ms. Martin? You proceed. This is file number 19-3690, rule number 02-0314-94100. The assessed value is 10832000 This is class code 20, so residential 2, liability status is taxable. This is one building with 12 stories, built in 1971 with 117 suites and 97 indoor parking spots. On page two, we have the income value summary. Uh, this building has two bachelors, 113 one-bedroom suites, and two two-bedroom suites. With an average monthly rent per unit at $827.91. The vacancy rate is 2.6%, and the expense rate is 49.29%, with a capitalization rate at 5.3%, giving us the $10,832,000. We have the income and expense mailer, page 7 through, through 11. And on the back, we have a map and two overhead pictures showing that this is, again, on Henderson Highway in between Chief Pegwis and McLeod. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bonnet, any questions? The uh, page two, your comparables? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, subject to both for you, sub 15. Per feet per, per suite, so it's on the low side. Yes. Uh, you have only one that's the same size in the comparable number one. That, uh, the rent, 784, is less than the uh, subject. Yes. And uh, the subject suite mix is uh, heavily skewed to one bedrooms. Mm -hmm. So some of your comparables, the two, three, and four, would have uh, two bedrooms in there, which would skew the rent, is that correct? <coughs> Uh, did you look at the subject rents, uh, and would you agree that uh, we should be using the actual rents? Um, I did look at the rental income, which um, is lower than what we have. Uh, yes, it is lower, and, and I'm just wondering whether, if you look at the actuals, whether you would agree to use actuals instead of your model. Um, I think that's up to the panel. I, I think that's up to the panel. Okay. okay. You asked the question. I think it's been answered, and we've heard the answer. So. Right. No. No. I'm yeah. just trying to. Yeah. Must have. Must have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's all questions. Okay. Um, Ms. Harris, do you have any questions? I have no questions. Thank you. Mr. Chair, do you have any questions? I got a little here. I'm slow. <laughs> so you're uh, the mailer on page eight um, has um, total revenues uh, after taking off the vac vacancy and mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, discounts at the million thirteen, while you're showing eleven thirty-two on your EGI. Yes. That would be the proper comparison of the figures. Did you analyze any of this on the mailer to see if it made sense in relation to the model? Um, not really. Not really? Okay. We'll see what the appellant has to say. Yeah. Now, I haven't looked on the expense side here. If you're, as I said, I'm a little slow sometimes. <laughs> Lots of figures here. Okay, I'll see what the film has to say. Thank you. Thank you. So, Ms. Martin, I'm looking at your main comparables that Mr. Blunt uh, alluded to. Mm -hmm. And looking at them, I have to say the comparable one seems to be a really, really fantastic comparison to this property. It's right next door. It's built about the same time period. Mm -hmm. It has the same mix of suites, about the same size, much lower rent. And your other properties, as Mr. Dupont pointed out, seem to have higher rents because they reflect higher, bigger suites. and. Um, a bigger propensity of uh, two bedrooms and other, and other mixes. And uh, I'm just saying, don't you think the comparable one is probably the best comparison to the property we're dealing with? I'm also looking over at uh, number five. Okay. Because it was built in 1972. Right. And uh, it's the suite, average suite size is um, less than 100 square feet bigger. Right. But that's a significant difference in the rent between comparable one and comparable five. Um, there's lots of factors that make different buildings perform uh, better than other buildings. Um, in one of the last hearings I was at, it was two buildings next door to each other, same owner, they were built the same year, the same contractor, everything about the buildings mm -hmm. themselves is the same, mm -hmm. and they performed very differently. So. Okay, well, yeah, then I'm looking at is a, is a building next door in Comparable One. Is it a sister building to the property of the subject? I don't know. Okay. Um, now, the city, when it chooses this model, it doesn't look and say these suites are nicer than Comparable One. It just basically has a model that is generated. We don't really know how. It's, uh, yes. you know, so how do we know that, in all fairness, when um, the applicant presents their actual figures, mm -hmm. and there is your own Comparable shows, that there's quite reason to question it, that the city's model is better than the actual numbers here. Well, we don't know which um, which buildings were in were considered in the model, right. and this is just a, sm a tiny snapshot of what comparables we have available to us. And I think even here it's captured that there's one is lower and one is higher. Yeah, but the one that's higher is uh, a different building. Mm -hmm. It's. Um, not right next door. It's um, I'm sure built around the same period of time. I agree. Um, the suites are 100 square feet bigger, which you know that, that's huge when you're talking about a small space. So anyway, you answered as best you could, though, and uh, thank you, Mr. Dupont. You can give us your argument now. Uh, yes, yeah, so the page one shows the photo. High rises, uh, the old blue balconies. Uh, page two is aerial photo and see the map. Uh, south of Chief Pikeus again. Uh, page six is the uh, cap rate, so it's built 1971, so it's very old. Um, it's a high rise, but it's old. So, uh, so the age group 1960 is 79% is 6%. The assessor does not make any difference between high rises and low rise in the year of week. Uh, page seven, our spreadsheet. Now uh, we show five years of rent uh, to show that they, they did uh, raise the rent quite a bit from uh, 2013. The rents were some some of them 14,000, uh, and now by 2017 it's at uh, one million and 23. And then we raised that rent by 25,000 extra for seven additional renovated suites. <coughs> We asked, because uh, it says suites upgraded upon turnover. Um, 
for the, well, that's part of what they're doing. They're not renovating the whole property, uh, uh, just only upon turnover. Uh, so we, we bumped the rent a little bit for that. So the, um, the discount to headline two is 40,000. Uh, we had this, just put the same amount of discounts. So we, we have slightly more potential rent line three because uh, of, of the uh, extra 25,000 in rent. We use the same vacancy rate as the assessor, 2.6. We have laundry and miscellaneous. So we have uh, line 13 with 995 versus the assessor, 1,132,000. So it's a big difference there. Uh, expenses line 31, we have less expense than the assessor. We're 478,000 versus the assessor, 558. Uh, we stabilize most of these expenses the normal way, and the only one that uh, to be looked at would be the repair and maintenance. Uh, line 27 shows the repair and maintenance. It is 956, so they have relatively low repair and maintenance. Uh, and they have low rents to match it. Uh, and then we apply our 6% cap rate, we get a value of 8 million six. Uh, we can go through the financials a little bit to show what we've done. So phase 12, 2017 statement. So right on top it does show the rental income, 1 million zero two three. Uh, it shows the discounts that uh, we have in our page seven, etc. Uh, repair maintenance is what we should look at. Uh, so the page 12 has some repair maintenance, uh, adds up to 47891. That's a sweet repair maintenance. Page 13, uh, building repair maintenance. Uh, we exclude the waste and snow, which we categorize differently. Then they have the labor, which we allow. Uh, then we disallow uh, capital expense building, 130,000. They have capital expense suite, windows and doors. So we disallowed that, and then uh, rehab for suite. Now the rehab for suite, we possibly should have allowed that, because it has flooring in there, it has maybe some normal repair and maintenance, uh, but since they categorized it as rehab, we disallowed it, and possibly we should not have disallowed it. Uh, if I look in the previous, um, Page, page 12, uh, they have flooring, they do have sweet flooring, 83, 83. Uh, nevertheless, we allow whatever they have, uh, three categories of capital expense uh, and, and we have. Uh, and then page 15, at the end of page 15, some more repair maintenance. And 2016 starts with page 16. Uh, and on page 17, we disallowed the middle page, capital expense building. We disallowed capital expense suite, which is the windows. And we disallowed the rehab again for the suites. Uh, and then we went through the same process for 2015, etc. So the 2015 would be... Uh, uh, Are they categorized things differently between uh, 15? Uh, they do show capital expense on page 21. Uh, capital expense building, capital expense suite, uh, rehab expense, uh, page 21 and 22, and we disallow that also. So that would be my report. Thank you. Any questions uh, on the report, uh, Ms. Martins? No, thank you. Mr. Terry, do you have any questions of uh, the applicant on this report? Um, no, I'm okay, but I, I on the EGI, on page 7, line 13, it's minor, but uh, the mailer showed a uh, million thirteen, which is very close, uh, which is 18,000 more. But obviously your expenses are in relation higher, I guess. <coughs> uh, not really. The city's at 49, you're at 48. So um, I, I guess the main question here, it's really the income that is the main 
factor in this property, correct? Uh, yes, because your expenses are lower, yeah. Yeah, so that would be the main issue. That's all. Really, I, I just wanted to go through Thank you. Thank you. I have a couple questions. Go ahead and ask them. Um, have you been in the building? Do you know the quality of the suites? Is it average, above average, below average? Uh, I have the email here from December 2019. <coughs> uh, they indicated 53 of 117 suites have been renovated, so less than half. So they've, they've been, uh, ever since they started raising the rents in 2013. So I would say half are not bad condition, the other half are in poor condition. Mm -hmm. And then, um, can you give me some clarity on uh, 2017? <coughs> very high um, repair and maintenance. So it's also the same in 2013 at 130 and then 133. Is it is that a, a turnover year where they were doing all the <coughs> suites? Is that what you're? 133,000 uh, divided by 117 is uh, just slightly over a thousand per suite. Mm -hmm. It's quite, <coughs> it's quite low. Uh, it's higher than other years, but in relation to other apartments, it's on the low side. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And I don't any questions, so we'll go on with our next item, which is item number three, and that takes us to 165 Dead Metro. Uh, we'll Rule number 04-001908-000. This is 165 Donwood Drive. Um, I believe this is one that there is a question of classification and uh, liability to taxation. Um, we have a value at 10995000 Class code 20, which is residential 2, and liability status is grantable. This is one building, eight stories. Actual year built is 1974. Effective year built is 1989. Number of suites is 119. Outdoor parking slots is 150. On page 2. We have the suite count being 70 bachelor suites and 49 one-bedroom suites. We have an average monthly rent per unit at $802.06. The vacancy is at 2.6. The expense rate is 50.72. And the capitalization rate is 5%, giving us the $10,995,000. With the income and expense information on page eight and nine, and two pictures on uh, page ten. We've got the, the map showing where this is located on Donwood Drive, and there is the um, this is the property in the middle there with the eight-story unit on it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Devine, any questions? Uh, would you agree this is a senior facility uh, and non-profit? Um, I would agree that this is a senior facility run by um, Manitoba Housing Renewal Corporation. And would you agree that the uh, Manitoba Renewal is non-profit, Manitoba Housing? It's a special operating agency of the provincial government. So don't necessarily, it's, um, I agree that it, it isn't turning profit, but there's a difference between a special operating agency of the provincial government and a uh, licensed non-profit. Uh, can't get charitable receipts. What's that? You can't get charitable receipts. 
Is, uh, do, do, you, do you have uh, the, um, the legislation that, uh, in regard to uh, qualifying for um, non-profit? No, it, it would not have any description. It would just say that the senior specialties for nonprofit, and they don't go to any any length as to to uh, uh, to define nonprofit and other things as to whether they get uh, charitable receipts or not. It is required to have a license. But does it say that in legislation? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. No, I believe it doesn't. Okay. Right. I I don't know. Do you have the legislation on you so I can check it? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, you're not. Uh, uh, oh, actually, I have to. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll get to that uh, when I come to my report. Okay. Uh, anyway, so you disagree that it should be. Uh, uh, Classification as nonprofit uh, seniors. Are we discussing classification right now, or are you questioning my report? Classification. You have the residential too. Yes. And I, I have it. I'm saying it, you should qualify for CC40S institutional school exam. Um, I think that it is uh, classification 20, residential two, and with a liability status of grantable. And in your opinion, it does not qualify for school exemption. For what reason? Um, in my opinion, uh, Manitoba Housing and Renewal Corporation is a special operating agency of the provincial government. As such, it receives a full exemption from taxation under the Municipal Act, Section 21A, which reads, Except as otherwise provided in this part, real property or a portion of real property is exempt from taxation levied by a municipality where the real property or the portion of real property, A, is owned by or is held in trust for the Crown or Manitoba Properties, Inc., and so forth. Um, however, under the Municipal Act, Section 33, sorry, Section 3351, grants must be paid in lieu of taxes in the amount they would as if an exemption were not in place. So it says that grants must be paid in each year to each municipality with, with respect to crown lands or institutional lands in the municipality in lieu of the taxes that would be payable with respect to the lands if they were not exempt from municipal taxation. Further, when the Housing and Renewal Corporation Act, Section 9.2, is included in this, it specifically mentions that grants in lieu of taxes towards the cost of school services are to be made annually. So it says, in lieu of the payment of taxes, the corporation shall make annually to any municipality or local government district in which the land or personal property of the corporation is situated grants towards the cost of municipal and school services in amounts fixed by the board. In my opinion, this clearly shows that it is not the intention of any of these acts to give the government the ability to double dip through consecutive exemptions and abandon its obligations to the schools of this province or to shift the tax burden for the costs of the schools to the individual taxpayers. Who is saying that you should not be uh, uh, shifting the, the uh, responsibility for who's saying that? That's my opinion. Oh, it's your opinion. Yeah. Because the school, the Housing and Renewal Corporation Act specifically mentions that it should be paying the school services in the amount fixed by the board. Uh, even for uh, if it's a senior's uh, residence? Does it say that? Uh, not in what I have. As they pay uh, grants in lieu of taxes, it says as if they, they were not exempt uh, to, to, as normal. So we do not agree that whatever it would be, uh, if it would not be a grant, it's what goes, uh, is carried forward to them. We're saying that if it is, if 
we're saying that as a crown corporation, or as, sorry, as the manager of the housing is a special operating agency of the provincial government, that the liability status set up for that situation is to be grantable. And right. you cannot so apply yeah. grantable and school tax exempt at the same time. We don't pay, pay, we don't pay grants in your tax, they pay 100% of taxes as if you were not get, getting a grant. So the grant is just equaling what it would pay if you were not uh, government. Would you agree with that? So they're not yes. paying more or less? Yes. And when a property is uh, classified as commercial, they will pay it as other. And when it's classified as residential too, they'll pay as residential too. Is that yes. correct? And when it's school exempt for if you had different ownership, why does that, that not go? Because if they were to be um, not grantable, in order to get the school exemption, they're required to have a license. And who says they're required to have a license? Uh, that's part of, in the legislation, we don't give the school tax exemption unless we receive a license. That's your own qualifications at the assessment department that's not in the legislation, is that correct? No. I don't have, I don't have the exact number of legislation in front of me for that. It is a, we don't just hand exemptions to um, anyone who's setting it up. They need to apply for a license and they need to get a license and have a license in order to qualify for school tax exemptions. And would you consider the board uh, as having to require a, a license, or can the board just rule according to the law? I disagree with your statement. Um, we talk about the board will make our decision based on how we interpret it. Right. And that, uh, what they do is not what the this matter what the session says. You say we'll interpret it. You direct us where you think we should go. We'll look at it. But you know, you're not going to be any further with your question, I don't think. I think um, Ms. Martin's answer is well she can. And uh, if you have arguments, we'll be pleased to entertain them and we plan those. Okay? Alright, so the, the, uh, just to clarify, if this was not owned by the Matsuba Housing, it was non profit, mm -hmm. and it's operating as the seniors, you would be giving the school exemption, is that correct? I would be giving this property the exemption, the school tax exemption as a non-profit if they have applied to the government and received a license. And who is the government they have to apply to? Uh, to the provincial government. Who hands out these licenses? Manitoba Housing, is that correct? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Right, so you want Manitoba Housing to issue a license to themselves, is that correct? Uh, no, it's not correct. I think that Manitoba Housing is grantable and is, uh, as we discussed before, that's why Manitoba Housing, um, in their Housing and Renewal Corporation Act, mentions that they do pay uh, grants in lieu towards the cost of municipal and school services. All right, so there's two issues here. So assuming they would have applied for a license and gotten it, would you then be... Have you a copy of the application, or are we supposing here? There's no application. There has been no application, so they haven't applied for it then. So you're asking a question, you know, is infinitely not correct. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying, if, yeah, apparently there's well, two... Well, there's, there's, there's not going to have hypotheticals, though, Mr. We won't be here forever. Well, no, no, they, no, no. Well, if they applied for a license and they weren't granted it, and you're saying that you want some relief from us and you show us a method of giving it to you, we'll do that. But I don't know where we're going with all this. There's apparently two reasons why they're not agreeing to have school exemptions. And I'm trying to establish now. Okay, I think you they have two reasons. I think Manitoba Housing Renewal is going to take this to the court for an exemption from taxation if they think that they're being hard done by, and it's going to fall where it might. Uh, so you're ruling ahead of time. I'm not ruling ahead of time. I'm just, I'm just giving you an opinion of this basis. I know. I said when you give this your material, we'll detain it. If you can establish that you've got a right to seek what you're asking for, or we'll look at your evidence, and we'll consider it then. But I just don't know where you're going with further cross examination at this point. They have two reasons. I just want to know if the one reason was not part of it, would they disagree to get the license if it was just the fact if they had the license and they were just a crown corporation, would you agree to give it to them then? The school exemption. What he's saying is I think if they had if they had a license 
And so if they, have a, would you, if they had a license, would you then give them the, the exemption? I think you already answered that. You said yes. They don't have a license. They don't have a license. So this is a circular discussion. You have two reasons. I'm just saying, if one and reason was disappeared, would you, would you uh, say no to them for both reasons, or just the one, or both together? Hypothetically. See, I, I'm, you're trying to trap me into saying something on camera that I am not comfortable saying, um, I, and I'm, it's not up to me to make some of these decisions. Um, our stance is that they are grantable, and as such, they receive a full exemption from taxation, and they pay a, a grant in lieu of tax. They're not considered a nonprofit because they are government. They don't have a license as a nonprofit because they need to apply to themselves in order to get the license, which, in my opinion, would be inappropriate. We've got that their own, corp the Housing and Renewal Corporation, which is, guides them, the, the Manitoba Housing and Renewal Corporation, their act guides them. Their own act says that they are to pay for municipal and school services. This is what I'm going by. No further questions. Thank you. Ms. Anderson, do you have any questions, the assessor? I have no questions. Mr. Chairman, do you have any questions? No, I have no questions. Okay, so my question is if you are basically again going to your property mix, and I see that there's a predominance of bachelor suites in this building. Yes, there is. And your couples don't have bachelor suites, so I'm no. just wondering if uh, did, would that skew your rents maybe a little higher than the model might not have picked up on that and the rents a little higher than um, ordinarily would be, or tell me where your other comparables show just, that you think it's a fair rent to be up here. Just because I'm using these um, examples doesn't mean that the model, yeah. I don't know which examples okay. the model was using. I tried to stay specifically in um, the very close area, um, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the model uses, if they just use from the neighborhood or if they use citywide. Okay. You wouldn't know that a mix of 70 bachelors in a building that has 100 and 19 suites is a pretty high predominance towards bachelor suites. That is. That's the, the trouble with trying right. to value... Um, a bachelor suites usually will command a lower rent than a one-bedroom. Yes. Or a two-bedroom for that matter. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's the answer to my question. Thank you. Mr. Um, yeah, so the uh, bachelor suites uh, Aerial photo of page two. Uh, it appears to be 60 parking stalls, 50% uh, coverage, no indoor parking. Um, what does the assessor say about that? Uh, they show 150 parking exterior. I did not count 150, I count 160. Uh, page 3 uh, shows that the, uh, they have a little sliver uh, top that says separately where they have parking on page 2. Uh, so it's part of the parking lot. So we're saying it should be assessed together. Or, or, uh, once you get a total value, it should deduct off the assessment. Page 4 shows the uh, the map that's just south of Chief Beglis, so it backs on to Chief Beglis. Uh, page 7, uh, built 1989, uh, so we give it a copy of five and three quarters uh, as a base, and then we, we add 1% uh, for the fact it's a uh, budget housing, it's, uh, normally with no landlord or air conditioning, it's low income tendency, basic finishes, and limited parking. Uh, page 8A. Uh, we don't dispute the rents uh, and we don't dispute the expenses. Uh, so we dispute cap rate only. Uh, the sister has 5%. Uh, we're 5 and 3 quarters. And we add the, the 1%. Uh, 
uh, to have six and three quarters for the value is eight million one four four. That's the vacant lot for parking. Sixty-seven thousand. That comes to eight hundred seventy-seven. Um, now, page uh, sixteen. I got some uh, aerial photos from different size uh, sites to see whether there's a, an entrance to a parkade. And so page 16, there's no parkade entrance there. Um, those two sides and, and uh, page 17, there's no entrance to the parkade. <coughs> For the other side, so therefore, uh, what you see in the exterior is all the parking they have. Uh, and I count 60 stalls, not 150. So therefore, Part of the cap rate is increased risk because it, it doesn't have a, enough parking for the, for the suite. Uh, so that should be part of the uh, cap rate. Uh, we have an extra appendix. And it's for both 505 Monroe, 165 Donwood. And you should have a, uh, an extra report, an extra appendix, it says. It's a large report. Uh, we start off with a decision of uh, a municipal board uh, back in 2002, and uh, the municipal board, uh, uh, page 14, uh, which is page 3 of the board, uh, the assessor reviewed, uh, so the assessor uh, used 9.5% cap rate. And, uh, Page 17, the, the agent pointed out that the subject represents a relatively high risk investment. Uh, he used 11%. Uh, and more quotes we have on page 19. The board is the opinion that the cap rate of 9.5 does not act adequately reflect the fact the subject is more of a high risk investment than the assessor's comparables. Um, so the board is the view it should use 11% which is a one and a half premium uh, and actually the, uh, I guess we have to go to the description which is uh, top of page, um, well page 13, uh, the property, the property in St. Boniface, uh, 84 suites, etc., uh, 19 parking stalls. Uh, it says the residents provide a new meal program, recreation programming, pre laundry, etc. on page 14. Because um, it says nothing about housing subsidizes. Um, the difference in, in the rents. And page 12, it's owned by the Matthew Housing and Renewal Corporation. Um, so the property is the uh, subsidized rental. Uh, so the uh, the board gave it a premium, uh, one and a half percent. Uh, page 21, we have a decision of the, the board revision on uh, quite a few, uh, I believe there's six uh, properties that we went uh, to the board revision on the amount of a housing. Uh, and we have the backup data, and I, I should have given you a, a spreadsheet showing I, I did that in subsequent hearings. And the board uh, agreed with us uh, not fully. Sometimes we were asked for one and a half premium. The board gave us uh, one and a quarter premium or whatever. But they gave us a premium over uh, what the assessment has over our base uh, on a lot of the properties that we we're asking. So page 24, we we're asking for a premium, 1% uh, because there's no reserve fund, uh, CapEx, uh, and social housing agreements. Um, so we're asking for 685 in the page 21, the board agreed with 685. So they agreed in full for our elevation. And we had uh, uh, an extra cap rate of 1% uh, for site specific premium as well as 0.75 for the North End. So the board agreed uh, to the 1% uh, site-specific premium. So we have the same for 
uh, or a whole bunch of properties we have at the uh, board revision where the uh, board revision has allowed for the uh, premium for budget housing similar to what the municipal board had uh, agreed to to do it back in 2002. And that's my submission. Thank you. Anybody any questions? Yes. Um, now, on page 19 of your um, extra appendix, it says that the capitalization rate does not adequately reflect the fact that the subject is more of a high-risk investment than the assessor's comparables. Do we know what the comparables were so we can look at um, the difference between what the comparables are or what the problem is with the comparables and this being more of a high risk than the comparables? Uh, on page 14, it says the assessor relied on the, uh, published reports as well as four comparable properties. Uh, which would be for normal apartment blocks, and so they're saying for this type of property, it's not a normal apartment block, and that should be uh, uh, granted a premium for its higher risk. Okay. Um, on page, page thirteen, it says the assessor advised this is a social housing project, which uh, which tenants pay a fixed percentage of their incomes. On your um, this page. Your spreadsheet in the body of the report. Uh, yes, your spreadsheet. Evaluation spreadsheet. Okay. Um, your value for the vacant parking lot um, is is that value under appeal at the moment, or is that? I uh, don't believe it's under appeal, and it doesn't matter whether it was was or not, uh, whatever the assessment is, is, should be deducted. But if it is under appeal... And it's not a reason not to deduct it? It's not a reason not to deduct it. It's just a reason to calculate what the actual value for 2020 of that property is actually going to be. It, it, it goes to the hearing after this one. The assessor could bring it up saying we have deducted 67000 and he's asking for fifty. We should not get fifty. I doubt we would go through trouble of trying to, to dispute the value of 67000 Thank you. It's not cost efficient for us to do so. That's your question? <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, Mr. Terry, any questions of the uh, yeah. applicant? Yeah, I, I was a little <coughs> proceeding here, but I'm looking at your page 8, I guess. Is that the, the summary? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Are we... Are we still with the with the city? Are we still with the city or no? no? That's all good. Eh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I had this big report you forgot. You were sleeping. <laughs> no, no. I read it. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I have you examined that building? No. No. And I see it's a 1989 building. So obviously something was done to upgrade it. Do we know when that happened? Uh, uh, I, uh, why do you say obviously? Uh, I, I don't think it has been. Well, if I look at the city's report, unless I'm looking at the wrong one, and it could be. There we go. So from 74 to 89, so something was done to that building, that's for sure. Is that what you read there? No, I read that. Oh, sure. okay. So they, they do have an effective years uh, greater yeah. than. Uh, that I, I did notice, uh, and uh, the answer, the assessor had to say why they think it should be 15 years more. Yeah, but they, I was asking you. Um, uh, no, I don't know. You don't know. And the condition of this building, do you know? Uh, no idea. No idea. What about vacancy? Because uh, we're looking at risk as well here. So, uh, do you know if it's vacant or not? Uh, we do have the financials. We, uh, they don't show anywhere whether it has uh, vacancy or not. 
Uh, I would assume when you subsidize rent that they have waiting lists. So if you bump the rent from 700,000 to 1 million, then it would be market, then you could have vacancy. You should not have vacancy at 700,000. Um, just to show you I wasn't sleeping, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, on your page, on your rebuttal, you, the, 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 not rebuttal, but the Municipal Act, Municipal De Servan was referenced 1999 on page 13. So obviously a lot of things have changed mm -hmm. uh, between 1999 and today in respect to social housing and how they're maintained. So, um, so I wasn't sleeping, I was reading. And um, so on page 19, you're saying the board is of opinion that cap rate does not reflect adequately the facts that the subject is a more of a high risk investment than the assessor's comparables. Would you say that, are the conditions the same in 1999 as they are on the 1st of April 2018? It's the principle. The principle does not change. We have many precedents that go back sometimes hundreds of years. Uh, it's a principle, so it's social housing, uh, it's small suites, a bunch of bachelors. Uh, social housing does not put the same amount of repair maintenance and, do and, and condition as they do for normal apartment blocks. So the normal apartment blocks, they will try to get as much rent as possible, and we had one that was renovated as they went along, and they will not be renovating these like that. Because it, 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 it's subsidized rents, they don't want the public to, to say, well, we're paying high taxes to have really nice properties. So the social housing, by definition, would have basic finishes. Um, the other question I had was um, on, on that parking thing. I'm not sure I got the handle on it. So there's a different role. It's got 67000 on it. It's additional parking. Um, so... Your argument is that the parking is needed to service this building, therefore should not, should be deducted because there's an assessment on it. Is, is my interpretation correct? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. okay. what we normally do when you have a, a, a lot that's needed to service an existing building. We take the total value less the assessment. Obviously, we've got quite a difference between the assessor's 150 and your whatever uh, number of parking spots, so... Yeah, my aerial photo, page 2, uh, relatively easy to count. Smart, you have to count up the section. Usually you, usually you walk them, if I recall. <laughs> I have in the past, yes, in the middle of winter, yes. Uh, but now, now we have these uh, nice aerial photos and you can uh, easily count. Uh, so I count 50 stalls, uh, uh, 60, and not 150 the assessor has. So a 1989 building falls in your 575 cap, and you're adding a premium of, 100, of, a, of, of one point. Uh, the city on your cap rate, page one, um, is at between 4.2 and 4 percent, correct? Um, for that kind of building? And the city's at five, is it? Yeah, okay. Just to compare, so the, your, your scale is three quarters difference from the city's for the same period, correct? Right, and the assessor 4.2, uh, that's four properties uh, under 20 suites usually, so okay. that the, uh, the, the 4.2 doesn't really count. So they, they would have normally for this type of property 5%, okay. and that's what they have. Okay, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. I have a question. What is, what is in this building right here? This one is right there. And it looks like from the other, from your page one, it kind of looks like, like the, the entrance to a parkade. It looks like it might have some suites up above. I don't know. I can't tell. I have some aerial photos, uh, mm -hmm. page 16, 17. Yeah, this, this part right here. 
Is that part of this building? Because it on your aerial photo with the blue lines on your page two, it appears to be within the perimeter boundary. Hmm? Hmm? I, 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 I do that. I uh, that I'm not sure actually. Uh, not, not this property or? I, no, it, it is, but I, um, I actually drove past yesterday um, and there is covered parking in there, but it's like it's not a parkade, but there's just, it's not indoor parking, it's under cap. Yeah. Okay. Some. Ah, uh, okay. I didn't count them. Okay. I wasn't there for work. <laughs> okay. So there is more parking than Mr. DuPont is representing here at the moment. I think perhaps we might both have somewhere um, between you? Somewhere, yeah. Okay. That works for me. All right. Thank you very much. I think that's it. Okay, that's any questions. So um, we go on with item number four. Well, I just want to clarify a point of order, Mr. Chairman. Have we finished dealing with liability taxation and well, classification of property? Well, Have we, we done that? Well, the applicant hasn't uh, given us a license or anything else, so I think the rest of this case is going to make a determination based okay. on the information so we have. we still have to deal with these three. We'll deal with that. Okay, I just want to make it hasn't sure. dealt with yet. Okay. We have to make a decision. Okay. And I think that the evidence that we've got okay. before us is what we have to use to make that decision. Okay, that's okay. fine. Thank you. Okay. So now we're on item number four, which is uh, 225 RDB. Oh, so summations, I can make summation argument? Well, if you want to make summation argument, I guess I said I had a time that any instances where summations were requested, we let them be made. So go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I'm not, I'm not uh, not, uh, uh, I did send emails to the MHRC uh, in regards to this, and they uh, did reply to me. And, I should have had that as part of my submission, but I, I, I forgot. Okay, but uh, this is not a summation. You're giving us trying to give us other evidence right now. Uh, yes. I'm allowing you to make a summation. They said they are a non-profit. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not uh, the Crown Corporation, but it's, it's a non-profit. They're not their for profit. In fact, any profit they, they make from um, selling lots, uh, uh, they apply that to uh, uh, non-profit projects. So they, they don't take out any money from out of housing to give to the government. And all you submit your application, you give us the evidence you had, and you know that's all you can do. So you, we have your evidence that okay. we before. So us. it's been established. It is. And, and you have to make well, consideration based on what the evidence we have. But it's, I'm not faulting you. You yeah. can only use the evidence that was provided to you, right? So you give us what you had. And okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, anyway, so can we with our My argument is that it, it's not necessary for for MHRC to apply to get a license in order for the board to give it a uh, school exemption. Okay. Uh, that's not part of the legislation. The legislation has not been given by, by the assessor, neither by myself, but they have the burden of uh, It's not necessary. Well, you know, that's your position. We'll take ours. Uh, if you want to respond to that, Ms. Martins, I'll let you do that because no. I afforded Mr. Uh, Duponta a submission and you have the right to do so as well. No, thank you. Okay, you find it. Okay, now we go over four. Can we, can we take a break, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Darian, I'll never deny you the right to the break. No, I, I usually like to stretch after an hour and a half. Okay. Well, we'll take that stretch. We'll take uh, 10 minutes now. Okay? Thank you. Okay, we're back in session, and we'll now proceed with item number four, 225 RB Bay. Okay. Okay. This is file number 19-3669. Row number 04-000-471-000. The assessed value is 9217000 Classification is 20, residential 2, with a liability status of taxable. There are four buildings, one to six stories. Um, they were built between 1965 and 1997 with 118 suites and 91 parking spots. On page two, we have our income value summary. We have 11 bachelor units, 68 one-bedroom units, 37 two-bedroom units, and two four-bedroom units. The average monthly rent per unit is $853.51. 
you apply the 2.6% vacancy rate, the 58.5% expense rate, and a 5.3% cap rate, giving us our 9217000 mm -hmm. We have the income and expense information from page 7 through page 10 and a map with an aerial picture on page 11. Thank you. Thank you. So the point any questions? Uh, your page 3. Mm -hmm. Well, actually page 1. Uh, gross floor area that you have there, uh, that would include the uh, indoor parking that uh, has 91 suites, is that correct? Uh, yes. So when you do your comparison on page 3, at uh, 1,028 square feet per suite includes the uh, arcade. Yes. It's a little skewed. So do you know whether any of your comparables include the uh, arcade or not? I do not. Uh, all questions. Okay. Ms. do you have any questions? I do. Mr. Chair, do you have any questions? Well, again, we'll see what the fellow has to say, but the mailer seems to indicate, if I looked up the right, the right year, uh, different than revenues of uh, $120,000. Yes. Seems to be lower. So any explanation? Uh, have you looked at the mailer to see if it, you could substantiate whatever the model told you? I'm assuming it's model. It, it is model, and I didn't, uh, I didn't look into whether I should be adjusting the rent. Oh, you didn't? Eh? No, okay. sorry. Okay, neither the expenses. No. Okay. Now, uh, I'm interested here. This is a 1997 building masonry. And you've got a 530 cap rate, and the previous one was also a, 90, it was a 1989 building, and you kept it at 5. How do we, how do you come up with different cap rates on something that I would say is similar? Because this one has um, a range of, of years built. It's 1965 to 1997. It's not just the one year. Oh, I see. Okay. And is that, so that would be the reason? You believe? I, that would be one of the reasons. Okay. Because if it's in effective age, which was the, night, the previous one of the 1989 effective age as well, it's, yes. that's where I was with wondering how you came up with different cap rates. Yeah. Can I explain more than that? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there any questions? I don't know. Oh, is it already? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't really ask you first. Uh, I, I would rather be asked twice than not at all. Well, and I don't have any questions. <laughs> so, okay. I have to redirect from that. Uh, the subject is built 1965, the main building, is that correct? Um, I don't have any details between uh, about why there's a difference in uh, why there's a spread of 1965 to 1997. Now you say four buildings on your page one. That's how it's broken up in our um, uh, yes in our system. It has four building units. It doesn't mean that it's four separate buildings necessarily. Uh, now your page eleven. Uh, basically shows one building. Yes. So is it possible that it was a little shed built for uh, in 1997 and that's what you have for 1997? Um, I can't definitively say yes or no, but I, um, one of the things that our system does is that because indoor parking is treated differently, indoor parking will be treated as a separate, uh, will be listed as a separate building, but it's not actually a separate building, it's how we um, entered into the system. Normally your system shows the square footage and the year built. Uh, do you have that anywhere? Uh, I know it's not part of your report, but do you have that anywhere? Uh, I don't have that with me. Do you, do you know whether there was a new building uh, 
a new rec center or garbage bin area or something? <laughs> well, not very specific. <laughs> I, I, no, I, do you have any of the, any information about that? No, I'm surprised it's four buildings. Uh, my aerial portal does show a building in the back, which I don't know what it is. Uh, I thought maybe you had extra information with you. So. Okay, so that's your redirect? Yes. Okay, and that's all the question then, so you can now go ahead with your report. Uh, Page one in this photo, it's all some of the buildings built 1965 we have. Uh, we got that age from page 10. The, the uh, original assessment of this property, so this is from the assessor's website, it says 1965. And today they have 1965-1997. So we don't know where that 1997 comes from, but the main building is 1965. Uh, page two is the aerial photo, so it does show some buildings in the back, uh, and that I don't know what, what, what that is. Uh, now, I basically see two buildings, there's a gazebo there, maybe that was built in 1997. Page three is the uh, map, so it shows it's on the... Uh, RB, just off Henderson, the south of Chief Baker. Uh, page six is our uh, cap rate summary, and the property is built 1965. The main building built 1965. So that would be uh, the age group 60 to 79 that we have, so it's <coughs> uh, Page seven. We show the rents are for five years. So they've gone up uh, 100,000 from 2013 to 2017. Uh, they've increased the rents um, uh, with some discounts, uh, line two, uh, higher discounts in uh, 2017. So we applied uh, line three, the uh, actual rent, 1 million and 15, uh, which is 717 per suite, which is uh, relatively low. But it does have bachelors and uh, preponderance of uh, bachelors and uh, one bedrooms. Uh, uh, then we have the laundry and the parking. So line 13, we're at 1 million 36 and the assessor is 1 million 177. Uh, so there's a big difference there. Uh, like about 140,000 difference, uh, which is basically in the rent. Um, now, line 31, our expenses are 580000 which is 100000 less than the assessor. Uh, and our repair units are relatively low at uh, 13 12 per suite, so it's a five-year average. Uh, so it has relatively low rents uh, and relatively low repair maintenance uh, to match that. Uh, so we stabilized uh, items uh, fairly normal based on our defaults. Uh, no other remarks as we excluded parkade repair expenses. Then uh, we showed their remarks that there's a difference at 2018 versus now uh, because now we have no premium for high riders. Uh, the appendix of page uh, 11, uh, similar statements that we had to 1080. Henderson, uh, so it shows the repair maintenance of so page 11, uh, page 12. Uh, it shows capital expense building, a uh, million one seventy two and for the parkade. So they spent a lot of money on the parkade, uh, which we anticipated. And they have a small amount of rehab, uh, going $89. And we excluded that. And then 2016, we do go through the same exercise in the uh, page 16, it's a capital expense, uh, 921000 for a parkade again in 2016, very little on rehab, and 2015 would be um, starting on page 19, and uh, capital expenses on page 20, 
the park gave us only 35,000 at that time. Uh, so we've excluded that. Uh, 2014, page 24, was only 50,000 capital expense, of which we've excluded. Uh, so that we put all the, the, that data on our uh, page 7, so the retirement maintenance uh, that we have stabilized is relatively low to 15 12th Street, so that's my report. Comes to the value of 7600 much lower than the assessment. Uh, the difference in, in the rents uh, offset partly by lower expenses. Uh, we still have a lower NOI, and then the cap rate's a big difference. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, yes. I'm just looking at your page 11 and comparing it with your page 7, and I'm just seeing a difference in values, and I'm just wanting to check uh, if we can reconcile that for, for me. Um, because I don't see, this is where you're getting um, the rental amount from, correct? Yes, the first figure, 1051, yeah. Um, okay, so 1051, but here it's 1015? Is that? Oh, there's the discounts, okay. And then, <laughs> I. <coughs> Because it looks like the discounts are included in here. It just seems like there's different numbers. I'm not sure. Well, the Which biggest in discounts we show in our spreadsheet, and, and the reason uh, our line 13 is uh, actually a little bit higher, mm -hmm. uh, because we have the uh, bad debt recovery line 6, 5546, uh, which is <coughs> some of the <coughs> under expenses somewhere. Oh, okay. Okay. So it just doesn't line up. Here it's just in. But all the figures are there, right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Anderson, any questions? I have no questions. Thank you. Is Terry, any questions? Well, yeah, I uh, just am trying to get my head around that 1965 versus 1997 building. Looking at your page one. to say but it looks like a pretty good building to me. Mm -hmm. um, have you been in there, uh, Mr. Uh, <coughs> uh, no, I, I appraised a lot of the properties and inspected a lot of the properties, I think, back over 10 years or so. Uh, when I inspected virtually all the Edison properties, but I haven't uh, for many years. Because, you know, uh, the, your evidence is that it may be gazebos or other stuff, but I think there was doubt here as to the year applied to the property of 1965 versus 1997. I mean, that's We've got to try to deal with that based on the evidence that comes in, and it's not easy. But the photo, to me, is really clear. It's built 1965. Yeah, but we don't know what was done inside that building either, do we? Uh, the assessment does not show an effective age of 1997. They say the, the year built ranges from 1965 to 1997, and they have four buildings. So they, apparently there's three other buildings built after 1965. And that they don't know. So they, they have a burden of proof, they haven't shown it. But the main building, most of this building is built 1965. And it's low repair maintenance, low rent, so it's not in really good condition. It's uh, below average, I would think, for condition based on the repair maintenance and the rents that it has. Okay, thank you. So I would say that, you know, looking at the picture like Mr. Terry, it looks like a pretty nice looking building for the outside of these. Uh, oh, most of the Edison properties were built in the 60s and 70s, and when I go down Henderson, yeah. I see them, and I see them as old park Okay, right. and it, it's a good area. Yeah. 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 And, you know, what, I, one thing I know, it seems it has lower rents than we'd expect. 
And uh, so you're basically saying that the city uses uh, uh, a system that um, determines not only the rents, but the expenses and arrives at a, a final valuation. And you think it's fair in this instance because you lower rents to not go by the uh, model, but to basically follow what you've done on, on your page seven. Yes, well, yeah. we do appeals, we should go no. site specific. Yeah, and fair enough. So basically, would you agree with me, though, that when you have lower rents, you also have lower vacancies? Not necessarily. Uh, and if you have higher rents, you'll have higher vacancies. In most instances, people gravitate to a good deal. Uh, the people that push the rents higher than normal will get pushed back. And yeah, people gravitate to, to a good deal. Yeah. So in effect, you're saying, well, we shouldn't use my rents, but you're still very happy to say, but we'll take the city who's granted us a vacancy factor that the model gives based on, you know, selecting a higher rent, but you're, you're happy to use that vacancy factor when you make your determination on each set up. We use a market vacancy. We have always yeah. used a market vacancy. So in fact, you, for vacancy, you take a deduction off your, you know, off your, uh, your rent of $26,400, which if you have lower rents, you might not really have that in the, in the, the actual vacancy is shown as $4,500, so there's $20,000 difference there. Yes. Okay. But I don't think it's a common appraisal practice to stabilize a property at point. Well, I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying it. to you, though, that you're, you're on one hand saying that we should use the, mar the market rents, but we're happy to use the the model vacancy factor. And I think that there's maybe a little bit of a having your cake and eating it too. That issue came up for, for the 2012-2014 settlement at the municipal board on the, I did 200 departments on the case management uh, and the session did not force the vacancy issue and we used the market vacancy for virtually all 200 departments. Okay. Uh, so that it, it's not a big issue to start with. And, and uh, it was not forced. Uh, we could have gone to a hearing on this, and we never did. Okay. Anyway, if we add on twenty thousand dollars to your NOI, if we did do that, yes, you basically then have you beat still ten thousand dollars, roughly or twelve thousand dollars less on the NOI than the city has. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Answer my question. So I think that takes us to item number five, which is um, 1845 Gateway Road. Can we read this, Martin? Thank you. This is file number 19-3725, rule number 04007256555. The assessed value is 11316000 Classification is 20, liability status is taxable. This is one apartment building with five stories, built in 2015 with 50 suites, 48 indoor parking spots, and 31 outdoor parking spots. On page two, we have our income value summary. There are four one-bedroom suites, 46 two-bedroom suites, with an average monthly rent per unit at $1,481.98. We've applied a 2.6% vacancy, a 34.67% expense rate, and a 5% cap, giving us the market value of $11,316,000. The income and expense information is from page seven to page nine. And we've got um, a map and a picture on the back page. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dubois. Any questions? Uh, no questions. Mr. Dubois, any questions? Me? Sorry. And Mr. Jerry. Oh, me? Yeah. Well, I, I usually look up the negative. Yeah. I see the income is lower. Yes, sir. Any comment on that? Oh, did you examine the mailer? Um, 
I looked at it, but I did not. Uh, I didn't think it would be appropriate to raise the rent uh, in this case. I kept it with what Mom said. So it's all Mom, right? Yes, it is. Thank you. Jason, you were sorry. No question. So I'm looking at this, and I see that uh, the model is really has a very, what I see, think is pretty low expense ratio. Uh, yes. Remembering too that this is uh, a 2015 building, so it's so, expenses should be pretty low. Oh, so you thought, okay, I guess I haven't seen that many 2015 buildings, so expenses are lower with newer buildings, obviously. Well, yeah. With, and everything. with newer buildings, there's not as much um, upkeep and renovation at this point yet. It doesn't need new. Okay. Windows and boilers and roofs. Yes, it'll be screwed up at me, so. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Bond? Uh, that, so, uh, page one photo. So, it's uh, your building, and what's your? So, it's four stories, plus a uh, main floor parquet. Uh, aerial photo, page two. And the map shown on page three. So it's right at the end of the gateway, uh, near uh, perimeter. Uh, because it's the uh, viewer property, we have a cap rate of five and a quarter. Uh, if you recall a cap rate study, we had three comparables built in uh, I think, you know, 2006 and plus. 2006 to 2014. And therefore, we have a, a very solid evidence on the cap rate that we have three properties. Uh, so five and a quarter is our cap rate. So page seven, uh, you'll see that uh, we have higher rents uh, than the assessor. The, this says on top it's a life lease. Uh, so we use the uh, assessor's vacancy and we add the uh, parking miscellaneous income. So line 13, we're 891 versus the assessor uh, 866, so we're higher than the assessor. Uh, line 31, we have uh, much higher expenses than the assessor. Uh, the assessor is at 300,000, we're at uh, 399, so it's about 400,000. Uh, repair maintenance, that uh, we have two years because it was built in 2015. Uh, it's 1406, so that's what it is for the two years, and that's what we use. Uh, the rent that it has, line, th line 3, is at 15.13 per suite, so it's relatively very high rent. Uh, there's no reserve expenditures for this property yet, but there is a reserve expenditures for the sister building. Uh, and then we'll get to that building when we come there. Uh, so that this property would have, uh, because it's life leased, it would have uh, 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 reserves. Uh, in this case, you don't. Uh, so when we stabilize, we, we end up with 492,000 NOI versus the assessor 565. So there's quite a bit of difference in the NOI. And then we have a, a difference in a uh, core percent in the cap rate. So it comes to the value of 9 million three versus the assessor 11 million three. Uh, the financials are uh, starting at page 11 and 12. That's see page 11, it shows the building areas, etc. That, that should be shown for other buildings of today that uh, but we did not have. Page 12 uh, was the uh, 2017 statement. Uh, so there shows a line of 907 million rents, which we have. But, uh, they don't have a breakdown of repair maintenance, but it does show 79,684. And then page 13 is the uh, 2016 statement. Uh, so that would be my report on this property. Thank you. Any questions of uh, the applicant, Ms. Martins? Um, yes, being a life lease, um, do tenants here have the ability of upgrading over, um, choosing to have higher quality upgrades? Doubt it's a new building. Okay. Okay, thank you. That's it. Is there any questions? Um, about the reserve fund, how can you explain that? 
explain why there is no reserve for this one, but only for the sister building? Uh, they haven't come to a point here, uh, yet where they have to spend from the reserve. So they have no reserve expenditures. Uh, uh, the other one... Uh, Are we dealing with that one today? Because I can reserve my question until then. Oh, the other building was built 2010. That's why oh. it's five years difference. Okay. So it's still too young to, to get the reserves, but they will get yeah. eventually uh, spending money in the reserves. Hey, Mr. Terry, any questions? Obviously, on a life lease, they put in money to reduce their rents as well. But you've gone market, as far as you're concerned, on the rents? Because um, when, when they go, uh, when you go on a life lease, obviously, the uh, investment made by the, the tenant is, uh, reduces the rent to be charged. No, the uh, life lease does not specifically say the, the no. reduce the rents. The life lease says the landlord cannot increase the rents beyond what the expenses are. That's the essence yeah. of a life lease. Yeah, except if if the the um, if the fifty thousand is provided by each tenant, multiply that so they don't have to borrow that money. That reduces the rent. I mean, there's. That's it's, the way it works. It reduces the mortgage payments. Well, sure. And it reduces the cost. Right. And therefore, so, the, it has a lower cost, and so that's it's inherent in the rents already. Because it has lower costs, they cannot charge more rents. So it's factored in there. And when we went to the municipal board for 2018, there was a settlement with the assessment department. Actually, it was a case management where the, uh, the board stated that you they would not agree to add 4% of the entrance fees or any percentage of the entrance fees to the rent. They're saying that people are paying their entrance fees in order to get the life lease to prevent the landlord from raising the rents. So what they have is a guarantee from that. They get the money back. So it's an opportunity cost that the session wants to add and the the board said no in the case management, and the session agreed. Uh, so we had the settlement in the Fred Douglas place for 2010, where they had agreed not to add the premium for the entrance fees. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. So I'm looking at your uh, page number seven, and I see that you have a couple of years of operations and you've stabilized. So what you've actually done is, uh, for example, uh, I'm looking at your effective gross income, you show that it was uh, 910,227,216, and in 2017 it was up to 916,136, with an average of 913,181, but you stabilized 891,716. Why did you do that? Uh, the vacancy is a difference there, line four. Actual vacancy was 1686 for 2017, 11,000 a year before. We stabilized at the assessor's vacancy. Okay, I don't see that because it says effective gross income. We, that should be what you're receiving. It doesn't say, is, is that not correct? Effective gross income is what you're, exactly, what you're receiving, not what you, uh, vacancy should already be taken into account. You want to take your vacancies off, right? Up top. When you stabilize, you stabilize vacancy. So the effective gross income is not an Well, you don't take your vacancies off, though, in line number five. On the actuals, we do remove the actual vacancy. Okay, I'm not sure if I have, if I have either answer, but that's okay. See, that's a, that's sure, but that uh, are you answer. looking at the stabilized column or the actual column? I'm looking at every column here. I'm looking at, you, I'm looking at what you stabilize it at. I'm looking at what you, your effective rates were. And I see that it's lower, and I'm just wondering why, especially after you've already taken off the vacancies. So I don't think you've answered my question. It's not already taken off. Is it's it? taking off a vacancy factor of 23,600 versus an actual of 1,600. I'm agreeing with the assessor's vacancy rate of 2.6%. Okay, so you're taking off extra because the city has achieved a higher vacancy factor than in fact the buildings enjoying. Yes, we're not stabilizing at the actual vacancy, we're stabilizing okay. at the market. So this takes me to the question I asked you last time then. Okay. And so I think I see what you're doing now. Okay. 
Now, I would never agree to a 0.2% vacancy on a property. And that's, in, and that's just you said. I'm just telling, I'm going to see what you're doing here. I'm not asking you what you should agree to. Yeah, so... You know, so let's just go through your arithmetic. Yeah, okay. so the difference between the AGI actual amount 16 and what is stabilized is the vacancy. No, I understand. Okay. It's uh, the stabilized vacancy. So you're happy with the city's vacancy factor, but you like what the fact the building is achieving. And anyway, let's not go there. So your insurance is $12,000 in uh, 300, 205 in uh, 2016. In 2017, it's 14483 which is an average of 13344 but you're stabilizing at the high amount that you attained in 2017. Our default is that we always use the 2017 insurance unless there's something unusual about it. Uh, but, but okay. Down, uh, or something. If it's fair. erratic, we, we will... Uh, okay, fair, fair. fair. Let's go to the next one. Management. You had 21223 in, uh, in 2016 and 22490 in uh, 2017. You stabilized at 21857 or you averaged it. I'm sorry, but you stabilized it at 44588 It's a default. We go 5%. Looks like you have the two together instead of taking the average. We never stabilize on actual management. We go 5% for all properties at all times. The municipal board has agreed with that. The case management for 2012-2014. We had a special hearing on management. I may have it in my briefcase, but the assessor has agreed to 5%. Okay. So I'm just wondering, though, if you use the city's you know, model rate or use yours when you, you're doing all the stabilization and... and there, there's uh, certain and ways to stabilize it. certain items. Okay. And management is always 5%, no matter what. Okay. Uh, insurance, utilities, wages, uh, caretaking, and taxes are usually 2017 unless it's something erratic. So that's the default. And then we use averages for uh, line 15, uh, 16, 17, and uh, uh, snow and advertising, those are usually averages also. These are default ways to stabilize different items. And then the repair and maintenance is usually done on a long-term basis. So okay. the, the management is what we do on all properties, it's, been, it's gone to the municipal board in the last year or two, and it's agreed by the assessor. They, I said it was sacred, so did the assessor of that hearing. They were saying, we do not adjust management. They wanted the assessor wanted the board to be at 5%, so did we. And Okay, so I see. So repair and maintenance is actually average, which is fair. Um, okay, thank you. Answer my questions. So that takes us to item number, what is the item number next? Is there's no number here. Um, six. six. Yeah, there's a number, I just missed it. And that is um, 1865 Gateway Road. When you're ready, Ms. Martins. Thank you. This is file number 19-3726. File number 04-007-256-550. The assessed value is 11 million seven hundred thirty-two thousand. Classification is 20, residential 2. Liability status is taxable. This is one apartment building with four stories, built in 2010. There's uh, 53 suites and 53 indoor parking spots with 15 outdoor parking spots. On page 2, uh, we have one one-bedroom suite and 52 two-bedroom suites with an average monthly rent per unit at $1,449.46. We have a 2.6% vacancy rate, 34.67% expense rate, and a 5% capitalization rate, giving us the $11,732,000. We have the income and expense information on page 7 through 9. And uh, pictures on the back. 
And you'll notice this is the neighbor to the last property that we just saw. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions? No questions. Mr. Terry, any questions? Yeah, I'm just again looking at the mail on page 9. Again, you haven't looked at this, have you? I took a glance, but I didn't think about changing anything. The residential rent is somewhat higher than ours, but after deductions and everything, it's a reasonable comparison. My review of page 9 is 914.8, that's the end revenue, versus your 897, which is the after deductions for vacancy and everything. Yes. So you seem to be a little lower in this case than the mailer. Yeah, and that's when we do mass appraisal. Up and down. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Senator Schumer? I have no questions. Thank you, sir. Okay, and you know, my only question is that I see again we have a very low expense ratio, and this is a bit of an older building. When does the city's model start picking up, you know, higher upkeep costs? I would love to give you a direct answer on that. Yeah. But I can't. Okay, we'll give you five years and see if you get it the same. It's, yeah, looking at it, it would be good to watch to see when the expenses. Because I think it's reasonable to think that a building that's five years older would have higher maintenance expenses. But we'll let Mr. DuPont deal with that, because I'm sure he will. Okay, Mr. DuPont, you can take a seat right here. Can I redirect? On the square footage. Well, that's new evidence, but you know what, I'll let you do it, because you did not ask any questions the first time. So you're not redirecting, you asked your questions in order. Yes, so your photo on page 10 shows the building, and every floor seems to be the same, and it doesn't seem to be an extra building, except maybe that little thing in the back. Okay. Now your page one. The plan area is 26,000, and it's four stories. So four times 26 would be more like 104,000. And how come you show only your square area of 80,000? Do you know why? I'm not sure. I'm not sure where the, how the indoor parking factors in with this as well. So I'm not sure. And I saw that, and I didn't think it was maybe proper to ask, but my page 11 from the assessment department shows 104,000. 104,497, which is the assessor's data, the equipment and internet, which does not match what you have here. So I'm just wondering if you knew why. I'm not sure why we've got less space than, it could be something to do with the indoor parking, but I'm. Right, so it's, Gross Fire Act could exclude the 80,000, could exclude the basement area, which is parking. Okay. Do you want to say something? Yeah. If you take the 26,953 and you multiply it by three stories, so excluding the indoor parking, you get 80,859. So it's not correct, but it's closer. Yeah, that looks like it's just excluding the indoor parking. Thank you. I don't know what the practice is. Is the practice to count the parking lot? 
Well, they did and others. Uh, usually the practice, the growth area includes, includes parquet, basement, everything. The assessment, the farmer rarely removes the basement and or parquet. Yeah, although whenever humans are involved, there's always a chance that there can be businesses. Yeah, and, and if this is done differently, so be it. Uh, so the plan area does not match four stories times the plan area. It does not match. And the photos it appears to be exactly the same for every four. So we're going to make a approach to the square footage of this man. It matters that much in the end. So if you go, I can go my report now. Please. Okay. okay. Uh, page one, so it shows the photo, and it appears there are suites on the main floor also. You see the windows in the front, they're exactly the same. So they don't appear to be windows of a parquet, so there appears to be suites on all floors from the front anyways. Uh, so if anything, the parquet would be below the, the main floor suite. Uh, uh, aerial photo, page two. They do show some uh, small buildings or attachments in the back, uh, which I doubt is the parquet. Uh, now, nevertheless, we, we relied on, on uh, the assessors, uh, what they had on their website, uh, page 11, 104,497. And that's what we put on our spreadsheet on page 7. So, uh, Top of page seven, middle of the page, uh, we show up 10497 uh, from the assessor's website. So page three shows the uh, uh, map, close-up map, so the Santa Gateway, again same as the other one. Uh, so page seven. Uh, so this is uh, not necessarily a sister building. Uh, it has different street mix and. The, number of suites, similar suites, I believe the other one was 50 suites. Uh, but it was built 2010, so it's, uh, the other one was five years newer. Uh, and this one has lower rents uh, per suite. And they, they show the rents uh, line one uh, and three uh, after the discounts. Uh, so that the uh, line three were 912,000 versus the assessor of 921, so we're close. That's 1434 per suite. Uh, then we add the uh, miscellaneous income. Uh, so line 13, uh, we're 892, the assessor's 897, so we're very close. There again, we stabilize at 2%, 2.6% vacancy, uh, same as the assessment department, uh, the market vacancy. Uh, so then for expenses, uh, we stabilize. Uh, as per default, so we go actual 2017 insurance, actual utilities for 2017, actual caretaker, actual taxes. These are all stabilized at the 2017 unless there's something erratic about them. Uh, and then we stabilize the three average for uh, items that tend to be erratic, like uh, professional piece, sundry in office, and, uh, waste and snow. And the repair and maintenance, uh, line 27 uh, and 29. So there's repair and maintenance and there's reserves. And they started with reserves. Uh, there's not that much, uh, 4,079. 280, no reserves for 2016. And these are reserve expenditures. And 9,000 for 2017. Uh, we stabilize at the uh, five-year average, which is 82 per suite. And the repair and maintenance, uh, Line 27, we stabilize the five year average, which is 1135. So when you put the two together, we're stabilizing about 1200 per suite repair and maintenance. So it's, it's relatively low repair and maintenance. Uh, nevertheless, our uh, expense ratio is 43.9% versus the assessor 34.7%. Now the taxes themselves, line 30, is 14.9%. So uh, we, we have high taxes in relation to uh, the uh, uh, EGI. Uh, uh, the utilities are relatively low at 9.7%. Uh, 
Uh, so our NOI, line 33, is 500,859, which is 86,000 less than the assessor. Our cap rate is five and a quarter, and we have T cap rate comparables in our cap rate study that support that, so it's very well supported. Uh, so we get a value of 9,540,000, uh, which is about 2 million less than the assessment. Uh, now I'd like to go to the appendix. So page 10 is the start of the, uh, what the assessor has on their website. That's what we show in our spreadsheet. And page 11 is the uh, square footage that we went through before. Uh, page 12 is the 2017 statement, and we show the income there, 943000 if you do not allow the interest income. Uh, it shows the waste of snow and the repair maintenance, uh, caretaker, etc. Uh, and we disallowed mortgage payments and the uh, plans for it to reserve. That's where the bottom page. We don't allow a, a reserve allocation. We only allow the reserve expenditures. Page 16, page 13 is the 2016 statement. Uh, and then, then we have a pair of Page 14, we have the 2015 statements. Uh, then the 2014 statements is uh, the questionnaire type, uh, page 15. Uh, and page 18 is the 2013 statement. Uh, page 21 is the general ledger uh, for reserves. Uh, and then uh, we, we have uh, 2013, uh, shown 4098, which is the, uh, the line, uh, under, underneath the line, uh, replace microwave with TED. Uh, 2014 is shown, uh, this, they have the dates. Uh, and it, it explains what it is, unit T20 except for vinyl flooring, so they replaced the floor already. Uh, then uh, 2015 is shown the, uh, uh, also, uh, it shows the 380 is the, uh, the cost. And then uh, page 22, 2017 is 1988. Uh, yeah, so page 21, you, you have a whole bunch of items. Uh, and they add up to uh, uh, 1988 after we exclude the uh, <coughs> 26 uh, reimburse uh, offering reserves. So we didn't think that was uh, proper. And the commercial lighting LED on page 22 we disallowed. Uh, and then we, we put together what we've allowed uh, that added 1988. Uh, so that's our report. Your line 10 and then in the remarks of plus minus for parking, they exchange between the two buildings or does it show up in income for one or the other? Um, yeah, it says at the bottom the plus minus is the exchange of parking between 1845 and 1865. So uh, they each have parking lots and sometimes have a tenant they use parking and another, another one that, so that. They charge 1060 for this project, mm -hmm. and then the other project, uh, I guess, have a positive. Uh, 
So they, that's just an exchange, so that's the, the rent includes <coughs> parking, <coughs> and the small amounts there are just the exchange that uh, yeah. they have. I know, I thought it was insignificant, but I was just curious, so thank you very much. That's it for me. Thank you. Mr. Tyrion. I have only, only one question. Uh, the last building was a 2015 building, and the um, repair maintenance was over 1400 This one is a 2010 building, and it's $1,217. Uh, how do we... The, the last one was newer, and the, re, the, the repair maintenance was higher than on this one. How do we... How do we uh, well, reconcile it? No, so I saw that. And, but we go site specific, and so it, it is what it is. I mean, each, each <coughs> different property has different amounts. Um, so they, they're older, and, and they uh, maybe better construction. Uh, the other one had higher rents. Uh, I, I can't tell you what the differences are. I can just tell you we go site specific for both. Uh, is this a life lease as well or not? That's a life lease. They're both life lease? Yes. Okay. That's all, Mr. Chairman. I said one question, but I had two. Well, that's okay. <laughs> and you know what? I would actually think we said last time. I got the answers last time, so I'm not going to revisit it. So, okay. We go on to seven, which is three Sanford Philly Road. When you're ready, Ms. Martin. Thank you. This is file number 19-2995, rule number 0900606-7000. The assessed value is 7849000 Classification is 20. Liability status is taxable. Uh, this is an apartment. We have it as five buildings. Uh, with two stories, built in 1979. There are 72 suites and 90 outdoor parking spots. On page two, we have a suite mix with 18 one-bedroom units, 36 two-bedroom units, 18 three-bedroom units, with an average monthly rent per unit at $950.24 with a vacancy rate of 3% and expense rate at 50.72% and a capitalization rate at 5%, giving us the $7,849,000. Um, we have the mailer, page 7 and 8, and a small map and pictures on page 9. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bunn, any questions? Uh, no questions. Is that any questions? I have a question. Thank you. Mr. Terry, you just want to look at the picture here. Mm -hmm. There's five, four buildings? Five? Five buildings. Okay, that's all. Thank you. So my question is, it's a 1979 bill, mm -hmm. which means it's still older than some of the ones we've been dealing with. And it still only has a 5% cap rate. And how does it get a 5% cap rate when we've had newer buildings than you've had today that have 5.3 something? Um, there's obviously different things that go yeah. into it, whether it's um, the, the, things that wish things, though. the quality, the, the area, the age, is all all factors into it. So it's modeled. I don't know if you have a model of rights of this, it's just an update. It seems to me that Mr. DuPont would say this is very consistent, <laughs> and even the city has acknowledged that a 5.3 would be reasonable. Uh, yeah. I, I, you know, what you told me, I don't know how I can disagree yeah, with them at this point. Yeah. Basically, but anyway, we'll let Mr. DuPont make those arguments. Let's see where he is. Mr. DuPont? Thank you. 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 Okay, so page one, photos, and this is a photo we should look at. Uh, these are the garden style apartments, yeah. uh, wood stairs, wood balconies, uh, asphalt roof. Fireplaces. Uh, 
Hey, fireplaces looks like. Oh, <laughs> the fireplaces uh, ex is usually exterior uh, uh, storage. Uh, these are my least favorite properties. If I were an apartment investor, I would avoid those properties because uh, they have high repair maintenance, and therefore they're uh, high maintenance properties. Uh, so the page two aerial photo shows the, uh, uh, they have all these buildings, it's five buildings, shows more roofs, etc., more parking. It's, uh, um, page three it shows the map, it's off Plessy Road, north of Kildare. Uh, page six. The, the table shows that the uh, session cap rate, they, they have the cutoff in 1975, and that's where they start with their 5%. And I disagree with that cutoff, and I, I have cut off 1979, because uh, all properties built in the 70s are very similar ages. Uh, from 1980 to 1994, there was virtually no apartments built except for uh, those that were uh, either life leases or, or some kind of financial, unusual financing. Uh, so we, we lumped the uh, 60 to 79 together. Uh, so in our cap rate, we had three comparables, uh, 72 to 74, and we believe those are good comparables for properties built 75 to 79. Uh, and that's why we, we have our cap rate there at 6%. Uh, page seven. So it probably shows the uh, built 1979. The the rent is relatively high at 933 per suite. Uh, now, you should look at the suite mix above the 18 one bedroom and then uh, 36 two bedrooms and 18 two bedrooms. So the as a, a high suite mix above two two bedroom on average. Uh, well, the T and the, the one bedroom, I guess, cancel each other, so it's, it's as if they had like two bedrooms for all of them. So 933 uh, is relatively high, but part of that is due to their sweet mix. Uh, the other part, I guess, would be due to the high repair maintenance that they're spending there. Uh, the actual vacancy shown in line four, actual vacancy, 2.3%. We went with the assessor's uh, vacancy at 2%. Line 13. We're at 806 and the assessor is at 796. Uh, expenses, uh, we we're stabilizing same as usual. We don't have a breakdown of the utilities. I mean, we went with the actual utilities for uh, the stabilization. Uh, and the um, the uh, wages and benefits line 18 uh, is shown there on line 18 instead of caretaker uh, because it could include some administration, etc. Uh, these lo large projects would include uh, caretaking and uh, leasing office also. Uh, nevertheless, we went with site specific uh, wages and admin. The repair maintenance, we stabilized at 2500 per suite. Uh, yet the five-year average is 3360. Uh, we'll go to that uh, later. So the uh, under remarks is uh, high RM due to multi buildings, wood frame, garden style apartment, RM details obtained and reported RM on line 27 is excludes capex and non-recurring. Each suite has their own washer and dryer and hot water tank. So that's more repairing maintenance for those items because the have more appliances to uh, for them to maintain and to replace, as well as having all these wood services. So these are very high maintenance properties. Uh, uh, before we go, well, yeah, I guess we'll go to the appendix. Uh, page twelve. So these are the financials. Uh, they give uh, five years. Uh, they uh, they give here a breakdown of the repair maintenance. Uh, and I have some notes in front of them so that the uh, under appliances, the uh, 2017 is 119 per suite. If you recall my repair maintenance study, 
we had data that was uh, 160 cents per suite would be the maximum. And you see the uh, prior years are less than the 8560, so they're below the the, uh, the maximum. The uh, paint was 271 per suite the one year. Not 27 per suite, sorry. Slash. Uh, then I have comments it's low, so they have uh, fairly low uh, painting there. Uh, major improvements, they have building exterior, you can see that they, every year 64, 35, 36, 76, 68. This is because it's a wood frame building. Uh, so that's part that uh, they have in excess of what the normal apartment block would have or, or high rise that's uh, masonry. Uh, the fridge and stove is shown there, 170 suite. Uh, the hot water tank, we allow that because each suite has a hot, uh, hot water tank. And so that's a recurring expense. And there's one high year, 32,000 versus other years of three to 9,000. So we allow 6,000 for that year. Uh, flooring carpet, it shows that the 397 suite for 2015, 242 for the other years, 352 for the other years. So that overall it's okay because it's below the maximum. Uh, parking lot, we allow 10% of the 51,000. And the landscaping, 29,000 one year, we love 5,000. So we did the adjustments at the bottom, and it comes at 205, 218, 290, and that's what we would show on our page 7. Uh, 205, 218, 290 is shown on page 7. Uh, then we have page 13 is the, uh, the financials, the rest of the financials before breakdown or repair maintenance. Uh, we have 2014, 2013, also page 15. Page 16, we have uh, uh, from the uh, internet, uh, it shows it has uh, the hours and types of property it has. Uh, it has floor plans. Uh, top of page 17, it showed end suite and outdoor storage. So they have the outdoor storage, but off the, uh, the balcony. If you look at the first floor plan on the left, is the outside storage. Uh, it says on top, end suite washer and dryer. So every suite has their own washer and dryer. And appliance, fridge, range, and dishwasher. And they have room air conditioners. Uh, so they have the all, all their own uh, entrances, so there's no central corridors. Uh, and it shows the, the, the hot water tanks and the kitchens, etc. Uh, page 19, so it gives you a uh, uh, better view of the exterior. You can see the, uh, the end there, it needs painting near the roof, the gable. Uh, page 20, we have a close-up of, of, of the uh, uh, suite layout. In the bottom right, it shows the laundry, the washer and dryer, and with the hot water tank, bottom right. So these are our appliances that have extra. They have an indoor storage right in the middle. Uh, and the other appliances will be showing the same thing, storage with the uh, washer and dryer hot water tank. Uh, the repair maintenance study, if you go page 8, we do have four other properties that are garden style. Now, uh, five Lake Crest, the second property there, sorry, uh, yeah, get it first. Page 8, yeah. So we, we have four properties there, because uh, we don't do that many current styles. Now we do some for Black Hole, Black Hole does not allow us to uh, use their properties for uh, studies like this. Uh, so Keenly Side is, is uh, also managed by Shuffler, and, and that one had actual R&M 2187. We stabilized at 2187, and their rent was 809. Five Lee Crest is actually two buildings. Uh, and it's not really uh, uh, same as this. Uh, the uh, 
it's more like a, an apartment with corridors. So that one has lower repriminess, and I, I think we probably should not have that in this category. I guess we put it in this category because it was a wood frame building, so it would have higher exterior expenses due to exterior painting, but it's not gar too garden style. Uh, so the other two buildings, uh, Salt Park and uh, Allegheny, uh, Salt Park at 2400, uh, we actual, that's what we stabilize at. And Allegheny is uh, the, uh, from, uh, that's Rancho, or Falco Rancho. That one was 2938, we uh, maxed it at 2500. Uh, so those tend to have higher repair maintenance, and uh, so we max it at 2500. Uh, other properties, uh, the, the, the apartments, the walk ups, and the high rises, we tend to max at 2000, but these type of properties we max. Uh, 2500. So when we, the page 7, after I did the adjustments, actual repair minus five years was 3360. Yeah, a really high repair minus 3000. And we matched it at 2500. Uh, but that's the cost it is to operate these types of properties. Uh, so then our net NOI is about 30,000 less than the assessor, the remainder of our differences in the cap rate. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? No, thank you. Mr. Chair, do you have any questions? No questions, thank you. Sir, do you have any questions? No questions, thank you. I don't have any questions either. Thank you. Okay, so now we are on item number eight, the last item on the agenda. And uh, that is 505 and low, and Ms. Martin, do you wait and you can proceed? Roll number 19-3681, roll number 02-04-100-100. The assessed value is 10096000 The classification is 20, residential 2, and liability status is grantable. This is one apartment building with 15 stories. Built in 1976 with a range for effective year built 1976 to 1982. We have 125 suites with 40 outdoor parking spots. For the suite mix, we have 96 bachelor units, 28 one bedroom, and one two bedroom. The average monthly rent per unit is $701.11 with a vacancy rate at 2.6%, an expense rate at 50.72%, and a capitalization rate at 5%, giving us the $10,096,000. We have income information on page 7 and 8. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Pond, any questions? No questions. Ms. Anderson, any questions? No, you have no questions that can be made. I have no questions, thank you. Mr. Chairman, any questions? No questions, thank you. Yeah, my question is the same as we had before. At the end, you see a whole year building uh, with a 5% gap. And, and you, I guess the last time you answered as best you could, I guess that's the same answer you have for this one. Um, well, I think this one, because there is a variation in the effect of your build. So yeah. that might be one of the issues that, uh, or one of the things that influences it. Okay, well, I thought the computer should bring it here. Yeah, that'd be yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Dubois. All right, the application is for a value uh, classification liability, very similar to 165 Donwood. If you recall, I had an appendix, extra appendix for both properties. Uh, so we had a bunch of data showing that the uh, Board of Revision and the Board had given uh, cap rate premium for social housing. Um, 
So photo page one, uh, the high rise, uh, Monroe, page two is the aerial map. Uh, page two shows the, uh, where it is. Uh, west of Raleigh. Uh, page six, for cap rate, it's built 1982. For our base cap rate, it's uh, 5.75. Based on our cap rate study, then we add a site specific premium of 1% to account for uh, added risk for budget housing, low income tenancy, basic finish, small suites, limited parking. Uh, page 10 is what we had from the uh, assessment website, and it didn't show the, the uh, sweet mix 125. So my page 7 does not show sweet mix. My page seven does a short amount of parking, but as that's shown on the uh, first page of the assessor as 40 outdoor parking. So if you want to pencil that in on my page seven, a top where it says outdoor is it's blank, it's, it's 40. So it has 40 stalls uh, for 125 suites, so it's slow parking. Uh, on top on page seven, I don't show the suite mix, but that's for the assessor on page that's 96 bachelors, 28 one bedroom, and one two bedroom. We did have the square footage, 84,000, and when you divide by the suite, it's 674 per suite. And that includes the corridors and the lobbies and all that. So that it's very small suites. So we end up agreeing with the assessor's rents, which is 701 per suite. That's relatively high, however, it's difficult for us to get comparables, so therefore we accept the assessor's comparable uh, market rents. Uh, we accept their expenses also. Um, but there again, I believe their rents are high to start with. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we have the same NOI as the assessor. We don't dispute it, and we dispute the cap rate, uh, and therefore we have the base 5.75 with the 1% premium, uh, 6.75. So the difference in cap rate brings the value at 7 million 478, uh, about 25% reduction. Uh, now I do say in the remarks in period locations besides Elmwood Industrial Park. Uh, Uh, page three, right off Watt, and uh, if you see it to the right, it says Gel Blend of Canada. If you recall, there's a huge building there for a window manufacturer. Uh, so that's the Elmwood uh, Industrial Park, and then it has Price Industries and Graphic Packaging. These, that's all industrial. Uh, and I have photos, I guess, in the back. Uh, Page 15, so there's a, a good Google map uh, aerial photo. You'll see on the right that these are all the all the large industrial buildings, the uh, jell uh, uh, manufacturing plant that has that little church at the corner, which we've probably seen many times. Uh, there's that part of the block uh, right at the edge of the industrial. Uh, and then the, the page 16, uh, some more uh, aerial photo shows more the other side of the uh, property. Uh, a lot of vacant land there. Uh, then page 17, see uh, some more aerial photo. So nevertheless, uh, it's not a good location. It's an Elmwood, which is not good, and it's right beside the industrial park right there. Uh, which is all part of the uh, cap rate premium, uh, which we don't say in page six, but the location is uh, part of the premium with the one percent that we have. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, uh, Ms. Martins? No. Thank you. Mr. Any questions? 
Uh, just the one on page seven. I was looking at the bottom on the right. You're saying 575 plus 05 plus 0.5 for basic finish. I'm assuming that comes up to seven uh, to six and a half. One percent plus five percent five. Is well, I thought no. I'm reading five and a half. Five and three quarters plus five is six. Plus five is six and a half. Oh, and uh, you're five at six seventy-five. Is your first maths is uh, incorrect, sir? Five point seven five plus point five is six and a quarter. No. Oh, point. Oh, I see. It's a halfer. Yeah. Point five. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I was well. Point zero five percent. Yeah, maybe. Okay. okay, you're giving me your 675. Okay, that's all I had. Thank you. Is there any questions? No questions. And I don't either. Thank you very much for the both of your presentations and uh, uh, the summation. Is a very well, the summation is the same as last time. Yeah, it's the same as The same summer. evidence as last time. Yeah, and we're asking for the last state. Right. right. Yeah. So if they both be the same, what we decide to do yeah. the other. I forgot yeah. to enter the evidence I'm asking. Uh, okay, it's there. We, we accept that. Usually, uh, you know, a matter of brevity, when something is addressed in your application, I appreciate this stuff, but I don't think you're leaving it out. Okay? Okay. Okay. okay.